the Lily Dale Jane Doe, identified as Roberta Seifert. I can't present this the way I normally do, but at the same time, I don't want to skip over who she was, as far as what I know, even though it's not much. We do know that she was born in 1954 in Tucson, Arizona. That's it. Story fast forwards then to Lilydale, Minnesota. Lilydale, Minnesota has a population of less than a thousand people, and it's here that she was found in June of 1976. They believe she'd been there several weeks. Her cause of death was never disclosed, but they did disclose that she was wearing blue shorts, socks, and shoes. She was 25 to 30, 5 foot 8 inches tall, but that's it. It took the DNA Doe Project months, but they were finally able to identify her in February of 2022 as Roberta Seifert. No recreation was done and no real fanfare to her identification, although they did release one photo. If you have any information on this case, please call the number provided. Roberta Seifert was 22 when she became a Jane Doe. She went unidentified for 45 years. The Caddo County Jane Doe, identified as Katrina K. Burton Benavegna. Katrina K. Burton comes from Colorado and had moved to Oklahoma in the summer of 1993. By the time she was 20, her name was Katrina K. Burton Bentevegna. She was married and had a young son. There is no indication of exactly when she went missing or if she was even reported missing. Unfortunately, NamUs deletes the profile when it's solved, so it's impossible for me to tell now if she was listed there as a missing person. However, sites like the Charlie Project don't have her listed, so if she was listed, it's likely she wasn't injured nationally. It appears her husband filed for divorce in March of 1995. It's unclear how long she had actually been missing at that point. I have no idea when she truly went missing, but it appears it was 1995, so that's a little disturbing. So he pretty quickly filed for divorce. There's no indication that the husband is a suspect, but it's definitely suspicious. And if the year and the divorce information is true, it was only the third month of that year. Katrina was found along U.S. Route 281 in a shallow grave along the roadway. I have no idea why it's so often it's either a roadway or a shallow grave. It's just sad and disrespectful. In this case, it was actually her torso that was found first. Her skull was discovered 1.2 miles away the following year. They tried very hard to render her unidentifiable, which seems to me to indicate it may have been someone who knew her. There was a recreation done, but this falls short. It falls back to the Eklutna Annie video I did, where I demonstrated the difference between my own pictures from the late 1980s and early 1990s, compared to what I look like now, fitting in with current style. Most of the photos I used on that video were from the 1990s, and it reminds me of Katrina's hair. She looks so much like someone I would have actually hung out with. And when you flash the photo of the recreation, there's a hairdo that is very much behind the times. It's reminiscent of older women in the 1970s. I just think this is an opportunity missed. It makes them look completely different without using the hairstyle at the time. Though I'll leave it to all of you, whether or not it looks like Katrina at all, even in her facial features. The OSBI Cold Case Unit submitted Katrina's DNA to Parabon Nano Labs in March of 2021, finding possible genetic matches in August of 2021. So it took a year from that point in contacting the matches and asking for them to submit DNA to identify her positively in March of 2022. Her son spoke out saying, I appreciate all the hard work the OSBI has put into identifying my mother. There have been many unanswered questions over the past 27 years, but now I have the closure in knowing what happened to my mom. Katrina K. Burton went unidentified for 27 years. The Ina Jane Doe, 1993, identified as Susan Hope Lund. Susan was a 25-year-old mom of three kids, all of them under the age of six. She was also pregnant with her fourth child. Then, suddenly, she disappeared on Christmas Eve in 1993, 
from her home in Clarksville, Tennessee. She had made what was supposed to be a quick run to the grocery store, but she never returned. Her husband, Paul Lund, was stationed at Fort Campbell nearby. Fort Campbell is located between Hopkinsville, Kentucky, and Clarksville, Tennessee. Those two towns are about 30 miles apart. The police did look for Susan, but they closed the investigation not long after, insisting she left Clarksville of her own volition and she was alive and well, living in Hopkinson, Kentucky. Although it appears they stopped short of going and trying to verify that that was, in fact, her. They referenced an anonymous and unverified tip saying someone spotted her the week after Christmas in Hopkinson. It wasn't the only tip, however. Her husband, Paul, spoke to the press, begging the police to begin looking again, saying to the media that a tip came in a few weeks after that someone had seen her off the highway near Interstate 65, near Louisville, wandering and looking desperate. The witness said they believed it was the young woman and that she was wearing the clothes that were described on the day she went missing. It was said she looked pale, thin, and scared. Her husband was clear he believed she was kidnapped and was in trouble, and he begged the police to keep looking. The police, for their part, remained steadfast that she was fine. Paul, however, spoke to everyone who would listen, and he said that she had her checkbook on her, and if she was okay, she would have written checks. None had been written. He was also clear he believed the highway tip. Unbeknownst to her desperate family, she was found on January 27, 1993 barely a month after she went missing. Her head was found in the Wayne Fitzgerald State Park in the bushes by a group of children that were playing. Those investigating didn't know much about the Jane Doe because so much of her was missing, but they knew she had shoulder-length, reddish-brown hair and believed her to be between 30 and 50. They were able to tell that she had an upper-front cervical vertebrae that indicated she suffered from a condition known as wry neck which affects the ability to hold her head upright. There was evidence of a healed traumatic lesion and suggested that it was caused by trauma. They believed it would make her head have a left-facing tilt. One thing it did do is it caused two unsettling reconstructions, one of which I'm not even comfortable showing on this platform. The DNA profile for Susan was provided to Red Gray Research Forensic Services, which is a genealogy company. Within days, the team found a potential match. It was passed to law enforcement, and they followed up with members of Susan's family, officially confirming it was her on March 6, 2022. I wish I could offer insight to where her family is now, but nothing's been reported as of yet. Hopefully this gives them some sort of peace. Anyone with information on this case, please call the number on your screen. Susan Lund went unidentified for 29 years. That's it for today. Thank you everybody for watching and listening. Take care of yourselves and each other.